Budget 2024 is just a few days away and we are currently standing uh, in PBR Chanakya located in the diplomatic enclave of Chanakya Puri in Delhi. We have with us a uh, few people uh, who have come out here to watch a movie. We'll ask them about uh, their profile, about what they do and also about their expectations from this budget. Uh, thank you for speaking to us. What uh, do And what are your expectations from the budget? I'm a software engineer. Uh, firstly, मुझे सबसे पहले चाहिए कि जो भी हमारी इनकम है उस पे थोड़ा सा टैक्स में जो छूट मिलती है वो थोड़ी ज्यादा मिलनी चाहिए एक्चुअली जो हमारा पैकेज है वो अराउंड 12 लाख है जिसमें से पता चलता है कि जिसमें से 2-3 लाख रुपए तो हम सिर्फ टैक्स में दे देते हैं सबसे पहले तो हमें वो छूट चाहिए उसके बाद थोड़ा हेल्थ के लिए जैसे दिल्ली के अंदर गवर्नमेंट की वजह से जो हमारी गवर्नमेंट ने आयुष्मान योजना जो वो कही है वो दिल्ली के अंदर नहीं अप्लाई होती है तो वो कुछ देखे क्या वजह है क्या नहीं है सबसे पहले वो दोनों चीजें करें और जो स्टॉक में जो चार्जेस अभी कह रहे हैं कि फ्यूचर और ऑप्शंस में कुछ ज्यादा चार्जेस लगाने शुरू कर रहे हैं तो वो ना लगाए दैट्स इट so that's what we are learning uh, from people that, uh, of course, a tax break, tax cuts are something which uh, have been on people's minds as far as their demands from the government are concerned. Of course, many people have been disappointed since the past few budgets, uh, though this is the first budget of the newly elected NDA 3.0 government. And uh, people yet again are having very high hopes with respect to any tax cuts or tax breaks which may be given by the government out here. Also, uh, with respect to investment, uh, of course, people who are active in the stock markets, they do require some uh, some degree of cushion from the government as far as any tax breaks on that count is concerned. Uh, we, we are also joined uh, by uh, by another woman taxpayer who is with us. Tell us about what you do and what you do. I am in the same profession, like a software engineer, so working in an international company. So uh, my first thing is, there should be, you know, uh, means specification for the new and the old tax, you know. They have divided all the new text, but uh, you know, seriously, it's not been understandable by the normal person. So it, there should be a simple de definition for both, because I'm not uh, able to judge between the both. Means to select old or the new one. So and yes, uh, including that, there should be some, uh, you know, rebates on the healthcare. You know, there should be a proper uh, rebate on the healthcare. Like we are taking the health insurance, but we cannot put the same into the R. You know, we cannot show it to the company, so there should be it should be simplification for us here. Yeah. No, so that was that's what we are learning from people that healthcare continues to be an important issue for people, not just Ayushman Bharat, uh, which currently uh, may not be applicable uh, in Delhi. And there, of course, there's a constant tussle going on between the center and uh, the Delhi government, which continues to be a problem, not just in Delhi, but in several other uh, states where uh, the government at the state and the center b uh, belongs to different parties. But apart from that, uh, tax breaks uh, and uh, the difference between the old and new tax regime continues to be a sore issue among many people. Of course, a sele a selection between any of these regimes is a call which every individual has to take uh, based on their income, uh, based on their investments and uh, their prospects of income in near future. Uh, if we speak about uh, the tax regime which you just mentioned, uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of difference, what kind of changes do you feel should be made in the tax regime? Because the government, in, in a way, is encouraging an investment under the old regime and is asking people uh, to, uh, to maybe not invest or not seek any, any degree of cuts for investment, but have a lower tax. Do you feel the new tax regime deters people or discourages people from investing? Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, it is. But uh, I, we, should, we also think that there should be more, you know, rebate to the salaried people, like salaried like us, you know. There is, uh, we are not happy still uh, with, the, with the tax procedure which is going on. So we want, yeah, you are correct. We need that. Uh, you had also indicated that you invest in the real estate market. How is the market currently sta uh, stationed like? Uh, what kind of tax breaks or what kind of incentives do you feel should be given by the government? Because we understand that the advent uh, of uh, demonetization reduced the degree of black money in the economy. But nevertheless, the property market is still surging at some places. It's st stagnant at some places. What kind of uh, efforts do you feel uh, need to be made by the government on that count? उसमें ऐसा होना चाहिए जो भी हम प्रॉपर्टी परचेज कर रहे हैं उसमें हमें थोड़ा सा डिस्काउंट दे क्योंकि 
अभी आई थिंक सेवन परसेंट सर चार्ज होता है प्रॉपर्टी के एक्चुअल जितने भी होते हैं तो उसमें वो थोड़ा सा कम करके फाइव परसेंट या फोर परसेंट जो भी गवर्नमेंट दे सकती है वो देना चाहिए जिससे हम ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा अपनी प्रॉपर्टी इन्वेस्ट कर पाए परचेज कर पाए बट येट अगेन आपने जैसे बताया कि गवर्नमेंट किसी तरह का रिलीफ दे रेवेन्यू uh, जो मिलता है प्रॉपर्टी की सेल पर वो भी गवर्नमेंट के लिए काफ़ी इंपॉर्टेंट होता है स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स काफ़ी स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स उस पर निर्भर होती हैं क्या आपको लगता है कि अगर इस तरीके का कोई टैक्स ब्रेक सरकार देती है डू यू फील दैट इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज दैर डिपेंडेंस ऑन दिस एंड मे लीड टू इंक्रीज इन अदर टैक्सेज इंक्लूडिंग जी एस टी और इंक्लूडिंग पर्सनल टैक्स यस ऐसा होगा और जीएसटी में पेट्रोल भी आना चाहिए क्योंकि हम डेली यूज में अपनी जो व्हीकल यूज करते हैं वो पेट्रोल अराउंड हंड्रेड रुपीस के आसपास गया हुआ है अगर वो जीएसटी में आएगा तो वो थोड़ा सा हमें फर्क मिल जाएगा अगर गवर्नमेंट कर सकती है तो जीएसटी के अंदर लेके आ जाए वेल दिस जेंटलमैन इज रिपीटिंग दफ्ट रिमाइंडेड बट सेल्डम स्पोकन अबाउट फैक्ट विच अर्लियर वॉज अ कॉन्स्टेंट डिमांड विच वॉज रेज बाई सेवरल सिटीजन सिंस द एडवेंट ऑफ जी एस टी दैट पेट्रोल एंड डीजल शुड बी इंक्लूडेड विद इन दिट ऑफ जी एस टी हाउ एवर सेवरल स्टेट गवर्नमेंट आर रिलेक्टेंट टू डू सो सिंस पेट्रोल एंड डीजल एंड द सेसेज विच दे इम्पोज ऑन दैट कंटिन्यू टू बी एन इम्पॉर्टेंट सोर्स ऑफ रेवेन्यू फॉर दैम इवन एज मेनी ऑफ दैम हैव अक्यूज द सेंटर ऑफ स्टॉलिंग द release of funds which have been collected as part of gst mop up uh, however as far as uh, the issues pertaining to uh, the the ta taxes on land the taxes on purchases of property and real estate is concerned that also continues to be an important source of revenue for various state governments and uh, it is an important discretionary measure which they often use of course they can't increase uh, registration charges beyond a certain point since that will deter more investment and purchases in the real estate sector however uh, they also so cannot uh, increase it or decrease it beyond a certain point so a certain degree of balance needs to be maintained uh, now speaking of another issue uh, which uh, often uh, is not reminded as far as far as financial discussions are concerned uh, but inflation uh, the cost of daily items which you buy in the market uh, do you feel any relief should be given in any of these daily items because inflation has been soaring on certain counts we have witnessed onions tomatoes several other commodities which have witnessed inflation in the past one year uh, which commodities do you feel particularly need some degree of attention or lesser taxes by the government actually jo government ko na jo hamare farmers hain unhe kuch dena chahiye kyunki unnatural cheeze jo aise ho jati hain is time barish zyada aa gayi to tomato ke jo price hain wo rise ho gaye hain to usme wo to kuch nahi kar sakte kyunki unki jitni hamari demand hai utni supply nahi to obviously cheez apne aap mehangi ho jayegi तो एग्रीकल्चर के लिए गवर्नमेंट को उन्हें कुछ डिस्काउंट देना चाहिए कि जो अननेचुरल चीज उनके पास हो जाती है तो उन्हें कुछ पहुंचाए एज अ वुमेन वॉट आर योर डिमांड्स फ्रॉम द बजट बिकॉज सेवरल वुमेन सेंट्रिक स्कीम्स हैव ऑल्सो बीन लॉन्च बाय द गवर्नमेंट एंड बी इट द उज्ज्वला योजना और मेनी अदर स्कीम्स दे मेक द वुमेन द प्राइम मूवर ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट बेनिफिट जो भी बेनिफिट है वो महिला को मिलता है वो पुरुष को नहीं मिलता और ये महिला सशक्तिकरण का ही एक तरीका है अकॉर्डिंग टू यू विच मोर मेजर्स कैन बी इनिशिएटेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट इन दिस रिगार्ड टू एंश्योर दैट यू हैव मोर वुमेन इन द वर्क फोर्स बिकॉज ऑफकोर्स देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ एजुकेटेड वुमेन इन इंडिया हु can actually contribute uh, very much to the economy which unfortunately are not able to work right now what kind of measures do you feel can be made on that count uh, first most uh, means important thing for the women is the health you know of course a woman working uh, working in offices or working in an home you know both are same for me so i think the health uh, there should be some health reforms you know today we are buying private from the private companies we are buying the healthcare insurance you know but still it's not uh that much which uh, which actually a woman wants you know so according to me uh, health is the first priority for every woman so that's what they are saying that health and daily inflation continues to be an important issue healthcare costs of course have been surging in the past few years despite reliefs given by the government on several uh, healthcare instruments of course there have been government schemes both by the central as well as several state governments uh, on the on the healthcare uh, uh, regimen on the healthcare sector however it continues to remain an important drain on household finances as far as people's expectations are concerned and people are expect think some degree of reforms uh, from uh, from the government beat uh, the center and the state government and uh, as far as specific demands are concerned i'm going to uh, go to my panelists for the last set of questions uh, ye akhri set hai questions ka agar 
अगर टॉप तीन डिमांड्स बताई जाए कि बजट से क्या डिमांड्स हैं आप उन, वो क्या कहेंगे सबसे पहले कि जो भी इनकम टैक्स में थोड़ा सा रिलीफ मिले फर्स्ट और जो पेट्रोल है वो जीएसटी के अंडर आए एंड द लास्ट वन इज you want to say you want no, to say I'm something i'm saying the third one is the uh, rebates on some you know uh, we are buying the eatables and you know uh, daily use things like you as just you mention about the vegetables and all you know, there should be some rebate so that it will be easier for us also to uh, to you know plan uh, likewise in the family budget yeah Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, th thanks a lot for speaking to us. And th this, of course, uh, is what people uh, have be have been speaking since some time. And uh, this, of course, is a demand which has been raised uh, by people. Uh, we just spoke to them, and uh, the, the top three demands which have been raised are, are some degree of tax relief as far as personal income tax is concerned. Also, uh, some degree of relief with respect to household inflation on daily use products, uh, as well as the fact uh, that some degree uh, of help on the healthcare front from the government so these continue to be the demands which are being raised by people and uh, it remains to be seen how many of them would be incorporated in the upcoming union budget Budget 2024 is just round the corner and we are currently standing in the diplomatic enclave in the national capital in PBR Chanakya. Uh, this is not just the seat of power or the area where all the diplomats live, uh, but there are several people who have come out here to celebrate the weekend along with their families. And we are going to speak to them about what their demands are from the upcoming union budget. Uh, thanks for speaking uh, to CNBC TV 18. Uh, uh, tell our viewers a, a briefly about your profile, about what what you do and what are your demands from the upcoming union budget? Right. The most important thing that I want to say is that I pay taxes to the government. Uh, I live in Delhi. I am into HR consulting. I have my own business. My main concern is that um, you know all the governments that come and they talk about freebies that they are giving to the poor and they encourage them uh, in a way uh, you know that they can be here in the city and they're going to get these freebies so as a result there are so many more migrants now who are coming to the city these are not the people who are paying the taxes we are the ones paying the taxes we are the ones paying for these freebies but what are we getting in terms of infrastructure development are we getting cleaner air are we getting better roads are we getting lesser congestion are we getting better uh, you know public facilities are we getting any of these our taxes are going into what freebies for the poor who don't even pay taxes so shouldn't shouldn't there be some system where we can actually see where is the money being spent we are the one paying taxes right so why don't we have that transparency i mean is this really a socialist country and we are encouraging all these people you know to live on these doles but the point is at some point of time the person who's actually working hard to make that money and it's not come free to us we've also worked hard to make this money so why is our country not able to spend more resources on these things yes you know we should definitely encourage more jobs and be able to help them i'm not saying not help them but as a percentage uh, there should be some sort of clarity in terms of how much is being spent for the taxpayers and we don't have that right now. And I'm sorry to say that Delhi in the last 10 years, uh, I don't know what the profile is in terms of actual statistics, but the visible profile is that we have a lot of migrant population here. It's not the same anymore. So how does this go? What is the future in the next five years? Uh, somehow I don't see a very positive outlook. Thank you. Okay, so that, that's of course a criticism of the, of the government, several welfare schemes and uh, what, uh, what the lady has claimed so far that uh, the, many of these schemes have often uh, lulled people into migrating into cities without a stable job. We also have with us another gentleman, another taxpayer. Uh, tell us briefly about, about your profile and what are your demands from the upcoming union budget. Uh, hi, thank you for the opportunity. I am Ankur and I'm currently as a, working as a senior tax consultant in an MNC and my only demand is that there's a huge burden on the taxpayer being the salaried persons and we haven't seen much into the relief which has been given to the salaried persons. So I think uh, a good good standard deduction, if you say, uh, a good amount of standard deduction should be given was 50k. So it should be at least increased to uh, 1 lakh so that there has there is some relief to the taxpayers. Uh, which have mostly been uh, contributed by the uh, salaried persons 
and apart from that there also should be if i talk about sector health sector and wellness awareness should also be uh, provided by the government so that uh, people are getting sick uh, day by day due to work pressure and everything uh, last but not the least i think uh, due to cleaner air we were talking about uh, we were focusing on electric vehicles uh, electric vehicles are very much uh, costlier in these days but we are thinking to get them uh, you know, easily affordable in upcoming years but that should be asap so that uh, we can switch to the uh, cleaner fuels in the future thank you a valid point as you spoke about the fact that focus on environment focus on cleaner air of course has been on the government's agenda and also a personal income tax if you spoke about if i can just ask you about the fact uh, that the government has already come out with two regimes two tax regimes the old tax regime and the new one uh, the old tax regime in a way encouraged people to invest the new tax regime is not encouraging people to invest per se yeah. and people can't really take benefits uh, as far as their investments are concerned do you feel the new tax regime is directed at Uh, increasing consumption in the economy instead of more savings because we understand lack of social security has turned out to be a big electoral issue even in several states it's a big election issue of late it, it has been pointed out by several opposition parties do you feel there need uh, to be some changes in the tax regime as far as encouragement to investment is concerned definitely uh, since we are sitting here today is because of the investment we have done in the past investment in the stock market investment in the buildings in the, in the infrastructure so if we won't Uh, promote in, uh, investment in the market there, there should be a huge like i i what i understand is the, there there would be a huge inflation in the market so i think uh, old tax regime it was much much better than than the new tax regime and i think uh, what i understand government is focusing towards new tax regime only which is which will not follow which will only going to follow the uh, consumption base as you said so what i believe is uh, old tax regime was good and there should be a relief given to the salaried people so of course we are learning about several inputs given about uh, the tax regimes be it the old tax regime or the new tax regime and uh, there are also people who are questioning several welfare policies of the government not just because of the doles being given out but also the percentage of people in the economy who are dependent on those doles of course uh, very, very uh, scathing words and scathing criticism has come out uh, from uh, from the lady we just spoke to uh, however uh, that's something for the government to see and to calibrate as far as the expectations uh, of the taxpayer are concerned it remains to be seen uh, how many of these demands would be incorporated in the upcoming union budget budget 2024 is round the corner and we are currently standing uh, in pvr chanakya which is located in the diplomatic enclave in the national capital uh, but of course we are not expecting people to be diplomatic when we ask them about uh, what their demands are from the upcoming union budget we have with us two people uh, tell us uh, 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 briefly about your profile about what you do and what are your demands from the upcoming budget well i'm a working professional i'm rohan rajwanshi and i uh you know take care of the accountants around the world my expectations from the budget would be to take care of at least the people who are paying tax people who are paying the tax honestly and you know if we are paying so much tax while we receive our salaries you know we don't have an option to you know save it in any in any way so and we are paying taxes on the things we are buying so if you see i in 1999 i bought diesel for 9 rupees 99 today is almost 90 rupees and it's not that far that i'm talking about so i think the budget should should not be a free way to anyone but i think it should be more sensible in terms of who's paying the tax who does not have an option and rather target the people who are actually escaping it so i think it should be uh, you know looking after the inflation that we are facing people don't get appraisals the way the inflation has been rising so i i think if we should look around those things and you know work towards getting those better it will be a better idea for all of us well inflation outstripping income has been a constant refrain across uh, stratas across people who whomsoever we have spoken to and ma'am if i can ask you as an indian citizen what are your expectations from the budget with respect to uh, the the cost of basic essentials the cost of living uh, the way it has risen in the past few years incomes have not risen in certain sectors what are you your views what are your demands from the upcoming budget
Okay, maybe you are, you're going to structure your thoughts uh, well later. Uh, but if I can come back to you, uh, you spoke about the you spoke about benefits which need to be accorded. Of course, there has been a lot of discussion about freebies. We spoke to several taxpayers, and of course, uh, all of them are of the view that there should be some benefit for taxpayers which should be given. Uh, if we can understand, uh, of course, taxpayers continue to be a large chunk. But it's also tax which is imposed on uh, on goods and services. That is the GST, which is being paid by all citizens across the country. And GST collections are also at an all-time high. Uh, now, speaking of further measures being taken by the government, uh, don't you feel it would be very difficult for the government, given the restricted fiscal space they have, to provide tax benefits and uh, while ensuring that GST does not increase? Well, I think GST is already uh, at the all-time high, as you said. So we are charging quite a bit of GST. If you see, there are some commodities like automobiles where we are charging 28%. So in a develop, I mean, we are a developing country, of course, but we are going to get developed at some stage. If buying a car is still considered as a luxury in our country, that means we are you know, falling short someplace. Uh, while we're talking about going to the moon, basic person in our country cannot even afford a car. And th you know, stop thinking about affording a car. They can't even maintain a car after that. So. I think it's a big contradiction in on its own. While we're talking about going to the moon and you know making revenue out of that after maybe the next 10 years, why don't we look at the basic problems that we have? Every time people or somebody asks for a you know direct thing that affect us as consumers, they take us to some place else. Like they, they, they find an agenda to you know uh, distract us, and you know what agendas I'm talking about. And those agendas have been proven. Uh, you know, in a way, anti for the governments as well. If you if I if you know what I'm talking about, so the places they wanted to win, they didn't win. So I think everybody knows what's happening. Everybody understands what's happening. It's just a matter of people, you know, uh, thinking more about it. Because I think 90% of the people in our country cannot even think about buying a car. So th that's not something that is of their concern. But the people who can, they're charging an you know outrageous amount of tax on it. Even I think the owner of Bajaj Automobiles talk about it. So I think they are charging us on our salaries, which we do not have control is 30 or 32 percent. Then we are paying huge amount of tax on the fuel. We are paying tax, road tax, while we are buying the car. And we are paying the fast tags, you know, the taxes on the fast tags, on the roads that we drive on, which were built from our tax. So I don't understand when this compounding of our tax as an interest towards the government stop and would be beneficial for us. Uh, as you spoke about tax, now speaking only on economic terms beyond politics, uh, there are two tax regimes which are currently in place. The old tax regime, yeah. it favors investment and it, it encourages people to invest. The new tax regime encourages people uh, to, uh, to get rid of high taxes while not save or maybe not declare the kind of investments they are making. Uh, do you feel uh, some change needs to be made to increase the degree of investment under the new tax regime? Because we understand in absence of social security schemes across the country, Country, especially uh, for the for the salaried class, for the working class, uh, do you feel there should be some degree uh, of incentivization in both the tax uh, schemes? Of course. Now you spoke about the con I mean spoke about the changes. I would like to first of all understand what is the new tax regime and the old tax regime. Actually, which of them is giving me more benefit? Because I've spoken to multiple accountants, and they still haven't have a clue that which is going to actually give us what. So I think. Putting out a regime is a good thing for people's benefit, but I think it should be transparent enough for everybody to understand. Our tax system is so complex, I don't even want to think about it. So I think changes can be done to the things which are understood. We still don't understand the new tax regime or the old tax regime. We, I, I still can't believe in today's day and age, under the old tax regime, you can only save till 1.5 lakhs. Do you think it makes sense? Because 1.5 lakhs rupees of savings for a person throughout the year, which is allowed without tax, is not going to make any sense after 10 years because the money, the value of rupee is not doing great against the dollar. We have seen pound is 105 rupees. So we are not, I don't know what, what number we are on the world scale of economy, but I can surely say it doesn't feel like number five. And it doesn't, it will not feel like number three or number two if we carry on like this. See building flyovers and then do not not meeting the ends so i was in, in mumbai some days ago and people were telling me that they have made the flyovers but the ends are not meeting now so it is all about rapid growth that we are looking at but rapid growth also needs sustainability 
which I think is majorly missing in everything and anything. I think infrastructure, tax system, everything. I mean, if we talk, ask about finance minister why the tomatoes are so expensive, she just outrightly says, don't st you know, I don't eat them, stop eating them. So if you get answers like this, I think it's a joke. So changes can be made, of course, if you understand it. I don't understand it, and I can bet 90% of the people will not understand what is the new tax regime or which is going to benefit them more. So that's my opinion on it. Thanks for speaking with CNBC TV 18. That's, of course, uh, the view from a citizen, from a taxpayer, rather, uh, who has been very vociferous about uh, what their demands are. And, of course, the simplification of tax regimes is a constant refrain uh, among many taxpayers. They're also seeking uh, not just more benefits uh, and tax breaks, but also maybe some better hand-holding from the government side as far as social security schemes are concerned, because, uh, according to many people, they continue to be a drain on the economy. However, that's something for the governments to decide, be it the central or the state government. Uh, but all eyes, of course, for now would be on the upcoming budget, which would be read out in Parliament uh, by the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman.